shortly after graduating, um, I was in New York City in 1991 and early 90s, and um, uh, I started working at a, a commodities um, firm, Shearson Lehman American Express, uh, in order to pay rent. And it was around. It was probably about 10 months after I started working there that uh, the Whitney Museum of American Art decided they were going to do a retrospective on Jean-Michel Basquiat. Thelma Golden, my dear friend and mentor, um, uh, was working for a branch of the Whitney Museum, and she told the curator, Richard Marshall, uh, that uh, I had done my thesis on Jean-Michel Basquiat recently. And we met and we talked and we figured out a way to work together. And I had already written the thesis and of course, you know, was in a relatively lucrative job for a 22 year old just out of school, um, but left that job when the opportunity came to further my interest on Basquiat and work further on the subject uh, through the Whitney Show. And so I did the chronology for the re first retrospective catalog at the Whitney Museum, 1992. Um, after that, I started working at uh, Dia Center for the Arts. And I think in some ways, Dia Center for the Arts has been a part of my trajectory ever since. Um, I started working there in the publications department, and that would have been in 1993 and had the great fortune of working with a woman named Karen Kelly, who was absolutely brilliant editorial publications person. Um, I worked next door to the curator, Lynn Cook, and somewhere in that time in dealing with her, my interest in curatorial became way more pronounced. Um, and just learned a lot from being in the proximity of amazing people. The first director there was, when I was there, was a guy named Charlie Wright who is a, a big um, arts person in Seattle right now and family from Seattle. But at that time he was a director and a really uh, amazing guy who created a space in which, you know, it wasn't just about visual art, it was also about writing. We had a great poetry program, we had a great publications program, obviously. We did things around music. So it kind of fostered the idea that, that relationships to cultural institutions and contemporary art should be formed around a multidisciplinary approach. And I think I've taken that approach ever since. So I was at Dia Center for the Arts for about three years and um, got to work on exhibitions like, uh, doing the catalogs for exhibitions on artists like Anne Hamilton, uh, Frederic Bruli Boabre and Alighiero Boetti, James Coleman, Katerina Fritsch. Um, of course, we had great holdings around artists such as Walter De Maria, um, artists like Mike Heiser, uh, artists like Dan Flavin, and so got to spend time around those artists. And uh, you know, it was obviously an incredible experience to have at such an early point. Um, around the middle or end of 1996, I went to Flash Art uh, Magazine to work for their, for their offices and in their office in Milan, Italy and stayed there for a couple of years before returning back to New York and came back into uh, not working in a cultural institution but working as a sort of freelance writer and a teacher um, doing a class at SVA School of Visual Arts and then eventually doing classes at Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore and Princeton University in New Jersey. Um, so it was, it was a way to cobble together a practice that was based in writing with one that was a little bit about teaching and one that could be about independent curating. And so that, that time was really uh, important uh, for me and uh, set me, I think, further along the path. In 2001, I did an exhibition with uh, Lydia Yi at the Bronx Museum of the Arts called One Planet Under a Groove, Contemporary Art and Hip Hop. And that was my first real institutional um, exhibition. And um, had a fantastic time with that exhibition, uh, included work by Jean-Michel Basquiat, included work by Keith Haring, um, artists of that ilk. Um, 
David Hammond's Adrian Piper, uh, a young guy named uh, William Cordova, who happens to be from here in Miami. We've been friends ever since. And um, also Louis Gisbert, who was uh, also another Miami artist. So it was a, a really interesting kind of a bunch of different things that, that cobbled together to make uh, an idea towards what could possibly be a, a vocation or a practice, if you will. Um, in 2005, I went to the Manil Collection in Houston, which also is connected to Dia Center for the Arts because it was the daughter of Dominique and John de Manil who started the Manil Collection in Houston. And one of their daughters, uh, Philippa, started the Dia Center for the Arts in New York. Um, and, and in some way, I've been a part of that conversation for ever since. My last director, second and last director at Dia Center for the Arts before leaving back in the mid-90s was uh, my dear friend, uh, Michael Govan, um, an incredible uh, mentor in that respect. And he is currently the director of Los Angeles County Museum of Art which is where I went from the Manil collection and was there for six years before coming uh, here to Miami.